Okay, good morning everyone. So for today, we will be discussing about bioinformatics. So our learning outcomes for today to be able to describe bioinformatics, create a phylogenetic tree using MegaX, and of course, discuss the importance of using bioinformatics softwares, particularly in systematics. Okay. But first, we have to define what is or describe what is bioinformatics. Bioinformatics is actually a subdiscipline of biology and computer science that is concerned with the acquisition, storage, and analysis of, and of course, dissemination of biological data. And we mostly use um, DNA and amino acid sequences. And bioinformatics uses computer programs for a variety of applications that, in, that includes um, determining gene and protein functions, establishing evolutionary relationships, and predicting the three-dimensional shapes of proteins. Bioinformatics is also a field of computational science that has to do with analysis of sequences of bio logical molecules or biomolecules. Now, according to um, Dr. Christopher P. Austin, uh, bioinformatics usually refers to genes, DNA, uh, RNA, or protein, and is particularly useful in comparing genes and other sequences in proteins and other sequences within an organism or between organisms looking at evolutionary relationships between organisms. And of course, using that pattern uh, that exists across DNA and protein sequences to figure out what uh, their function is. Okay, so we may think about uh, bioinformatics as essentially the linguistics uh, part of uh, genetics. And that is the linguistics people are looking at patterns in language. And that's what bioinformatics people do. Looking for patterns within sequences of DNA or protein. Now, we have what we call FASTA format that will be uh, introduced later on in the MegaX application. Okay. Biological sequences are passed to software in a standardized format referred to as FASTA. FASTA is actually a plain text format that can be read in any text editor. Okay, example in our case, Notepad or in MacBook, no, that is text editor or text edit. Okay, and um, nucleic acids or the DNA and RNA, and the proteins are represented by single-letter nucleotides or single-letter amino acids, no? And FASTA as, uh, sequences begin with a, um, with this symbol, no? Uh, in the first line, followed by some descriptive information about the sequence, like a sequence name. So we will be discussing that later on as we go on the Mega Act. Mega X application. So the next line consists of the sequence information, and a FASTA file can contain, contain um, multiple sequence entries that is demarcated by a new line and a title line beginning with the symbol as I have presented. Now, these are examples no, of a FASTA file. So, of course, no, with the format made up nucleic acid sequence no this is the sequence and then the multiple um, sequence that is being uh, uh, discussed a while ago no it can be represented or um, using the symbol no the lesser than symbol um, and then followed by its name and then the sequence okay FASTA files are uh, in plain text but they are usually or they contain a an extension that indicates it is a sequence file an example of that um uh extension is that fasta that fa 
that uh, FNA or even that text, no? It can be. So a sing a list. This is the list, no, of single letter codes for uh, nucleic acids. No, that is uh, presented in this table. So you will see later on the different um, symbols here, no, that will be used for our uh, software. Okay. So the references I use here is from McMurray. You know, the relationship between cranial structure and biomechanical performance and ecological diversity in uh, vi varanoid lizards. And of course, I also use the reference from um, Dr. Christopher P. Austin. So... To move on, we will be now, um, I will be now sharing with you the Mega X application. But first, let us try to um, define what is the functions, the, uh, what is the functions and the use of this software, okay? Okay, so this is actually the interface of the Mega X application or the molecular evolutionary genetics analysis no application. So the software is actually an integrated suite of tools for statistics-based comparative analysis of molecular sequence data based on um, evolutionary principles that is from uh, Kumar and Tamura 2011. Uh, MEGA is being used by um, biologists in a large number of uh, laboratories for reconstructing the evolutionary histories of a species and, of course, inferring the extent and nature of selective forces that is being um, or that shapes the evolution of genes and species. Additionally, MEGA is uh, used in many classrooms such as uh, in our class, no, for teaching the methods used in evolutionary bioinformatics or even in systematics. One of MEGA's uh, key features is its graphical um, user interface. No? You can see here um, the phylogeny, button, user tree, ancestor, selection, and of course, you will see later on a uh, graphical user interface that, that I am talking about. However, um, the GUI, which facilitates detailed visualization, interactive exploration of sequence data, uh, phylogenic trees, and analysis of the results are, of course, um, there are certain limitations. No? Over time, the needs of mega users have expanded no? due to the increasing availability of multi-gene and genome scale data, which necessitate interactive, high-throughput um, uh, analysis, okay? So in order to address this, we have to take note, no, that the mega-analysis have been, uh, what do you call this, re-engineered, no, for us to be able to use it, no, in according to our um, need or in or in accordance with our um, objective on using the software. Now, um, let us try to exit the application and I'll show you how or where did I have um, downloaded the application. So in your web browser, you just have to type mega x. And then it will yield you into their um, website. No, this is the website for their application. Take note, um, the application is being updated from time to time. So last week I have downloaded a Mega X, no, 10.1.1. But then recently just... Uh, um, just this date, no? It was being updated. So, 
um, the interface is the same, but there are some features that is uh, being updated, like the buttons no, that is present in the uh, GUI. Okay, so here you just have to click download and then it will bring you to a form no, wherein you have to type your um, version, no, Windows, or if you are in, you have Apple or MacBook, no, Mac OS, and then choose your um, system here, operating system, whether your operating system is 64-bit uh, or 32-bit, because actually the operating system will affect the performance or the process of that application. So for my computer, um, it is 64 bits. So you just have to go to the control panel and the system and go to the system and you can see there whether your computer or laptop is in 64 or 32 bit. So what kind of institution? Uh, okay lang itong i-maintain or you can write anything like St. Mary's University and click it is it as a university and college. And of course, you have to um, check one of these. Okay. And then you will be directed to the download and it will be automatically um, be downloaded in your computer and you have to install it, of course. Now, in this software, we will be allowed um, to see or to actually see how evolutionary change happens at the genetic level. So let's go back to our um, software, okay? Now, I have instructed you before that uh, you have to look for a marker gene or yeah, and of course, you have to take a look on your or choose your um, organism of interest or the species of interest no, for us to be able to um, easily um, create a phylogenetic tree for this organism. Okay, so MEGA or mega X application will allow us to look up any gene that has been sequenced by any genetics laboratory in the world and uh, that has been loaded up into the genetics database we call as the NCBI, which is maintained by the National Institutes of Health. Now we're going to start with a particular gene that I'm going to use as the tutorial gene to learn this program. Okay, so we're going to start with a gene that's ha that has been identified as uh, a contributory to a person's likelihood of getting breast cancer. And the name of that gene is BRCA2. Okay, so that is what I am telling you. So you have to look up into a certain marker gene. Okay, and later on... Um, after we try to look for the BRCA2 gene for human or, yeah, for human, we will be trying to look for other genes also for, um, or we will try to uh, look up to the same gene with other organisms. Okay, so, but first I will be teaching you how to um, do the searching of this, um, what we call, marker genes or a particular gene that you would like to um, examine or analyze. Okay, so let us first go to, of course, you will be going to your web browser and um, search for Google Scholar. And this Google scholar website is actually a website of wherein all the scientists around the world um, submits no researches or peer-reviewed researches no and of course um, in this website uh, it can also be found no the published 
uh, scientific journey. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to go to the NCBI website. In this example, we are going to look at the breast cancer gene no, or the B BR BRCA2 two. gene. The align here, no, the align button here, and then go to query data banks. So I will be teaching you later on how to do blast search also. Okay, but first we have to go to query data banks and then a screen will be shown. Um, so this is what I am telling you. This is the screen that will be shown if you click query data banks. So here you will be um, redirected to the NCBI um, website no, in the nucleotide interface. So here you are going to search for the your marker gene. So in our case, no, I am looking for BRCA2 gene for humans, okay, uh, homo sapiens. Okay, and then you just press enter and then um, you will be redirected to certain um, nucleotide uh, banks, okay? And uh, I forgot, this software uses your internet connection. So if you try to run this Mega X application, you are obliged to connect your device to the internet so that it will perform um, searches. No? And of course, I will be teaching you also later on how to um, is skip this uh, searching, no? And then proceed automatically to aligning the sequences of the of the organism. We will be automatically um, constructing phylogenet phylogenetic tree of your organism. Okay, so we have um, performed the search already. So I have inputted or I have input here, um, we are CA2 homo sapiens. Uh, make sure that you have entered or checked the spelling correctly, no? In order to have an accurate um, searching for this website. And I also forgot, if you go directly to their website, you will not be able to see this uh, button here, you add to alignment, no? Because this is very important later on if we will be performing the analysis of the genetic sequence of your organism of interest, okay? So the question here in our activity is how BRCA2 gene evolved and of course, what other species was it present in and which one is it more uh, closely similar or related to the human genome sequence? Now. Okay, so now that we have uh, um, figured out no, the search for the BRCA2 gene for the humans, now we're going to um, take a look on the searches no, or the results that the search has brought. Okay, so we will try to look here the um, largest, uh, what do you call this? genetic sequence no the one that has the largest base pairs no so we will try to look at it because uh, um, getting the largest um, the complete genomic sequence of the human breast cancer no that makes or that will make our um, phylogenetic tree more accurate no so Okay, so we will try to see what perfectly suits our search. Okay, so I have seen a 10,987 no, base pair. So we have to click that one and then now let us try to view the information found in this um, 
nucleotide or the search that we have. So here we can find the locus, the definition, the accession, the version, um, the source, and of course the organism, the authors, the title, uh, the journal, of course, and um, of course our um, nucleotide basis. So it is here. So we can see that it is um, approximately 11,000 base pairs, 10,981. Okay, so we have to click the back button. And what we're going to do is to get the FASTA no? that I was uh, discussing last time. Okay, so click FASTA. And then you will be redirected to the sequences, no? The, the sequences, the nucleotide base pairs. So this is the um, sequence of the BRCA2 gene in humans, okay? So in this sequence, we are actually just looking into the one side of the DNA. Of course, remember that DNA is a double strand or the double stranded, no? Um, we are just actually looking at the um, one strand, no? Now, here's the fan, fa fan part, okay? So, we're going to take a look at the um, evolution of this gene and how do this uh, uh, gene evolve, no? And to do that, now, we're going to take a part of this gene here that we have here. So this is actually more than 10,000. So it is a lot, no? So we just have to take a part. So um, we're going to no, take a look no, in this uh, window. We have here the button run blast. So here... Uh, blast search, no, the function of this is it will take the sequence, no, a part of the sequence that we're, we will be copying and compare it to every other DNA sequence of other um, organisms in the database. And, uh, and based on that, uh, what they call this, we'll be able to download the gene sequence in all sorts of different species and be able to create an evolutionary tree for this gene based on their similarities. Now, we have to um, copy, of course, the a part of the genetic sequence, no? I think, okay, so up to here, and then you have to copy that. Okay, and then click Run Blast. And then after that, you will be redirected to another um, window, okay? Okay, so let's just wait for the um, application to run. Okay, so we are now in the... Um, new window for the blast search no so you have to put here the fasta sequence that we have copied so you have to paste in this um, section here and then okay uh, you do not have to configure in this um, section but in this part so we have to click on somewhat similar sequences or the blast N because the mega blast, no, it will take so much time, no, because it will take a look at highly similar sequences no, that will take a longer periods of time to uh, perform the blast search. Okay. And then we're going to click blast. Okay, so when it is blasting, no, it is actually comparing the sequence that we have copied to other sequences. So as shown here, no, it is uh, being um, um, 
statistically shown here the time and the uh, time were in okay yeah so it is finished on searching or comparing for the sequence that we have copied now you have to scroll it okay to look for the um results that this uh, search has uh, um performed now we just have to take a look on the descriptions okay so here we have of course the human um um genomic sequence now that we have so we have to take a look here this is actually the first um or the original uh data that we have a while ago so it is 100 percent no and um next one is okay so this is another um organism pantroglodytes Okay, of course, this is another pan paniscus. Okay, okay, this one, pongo abeli. Oh, this also, hyoglobates moloch, nomascus leucogenis, macaca fascicularis, and macaca mulata. Okay, so as you can see, uh, it was able to compare to different species, correct? So these, these are actually a lot of species here. Okay, so let's try to find more. Okay, so mm -hmm. we also have uh, Awotus nensime, Sapagius apella, um, Calithrix jacus, Circosebus atis, and what else? Okay, so no more. So we have to get all the organisms that is related, or we minimize our organisms into 10. Okay, so one of which is the, of course, human, and uh, this one, two, three, four, uh, five, Six, mm -hmm, seven, um, eight, nine, and then ten. Our last is Papio Anubis. Okay, so next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to get the genomic sequence of our chosen organism and then align it to our software. Okay, but first let us uh, explore no, the result that this search blast search has given us when, now when we go to the graphic summary you will see the um genomic uh, what do you call this sequences now these are actually the genomic sequences of the organisms that the, that the um website has uh, searched now the first part that we have here is actually our query no of the human um, genomic sequence and the rest are the other organisms um, sequences okay and so take note there are spaces here where in in this locus no uh, some of the base pairs are um, they are not um, what do you call this they are not found no it is uh um this is due to some factors such as mutations so it can either be there is an insertion mutation and um deletion mutations so we will be talking about that later on as we go our um as we continue on our activity okay so let's go back to the description and then we have to unselect all the um results or the sequences that uh, we have here and then uh, of course take a look at this um, query okay this is our original sequence no this is from human 
So take a look at this uh, part of the table. So we have the accession number here. So what we're going to do is to right click that so that we will be able to see the result. Okay, so it is being um, loaded. So this is actually the um, the one that I have presented you earlier. No, so these are the genes of the um, human genomic sequence for the BRCA2 gene. Okay, so what we're going to do is to add it in our um, software by clicking the add to alignment and then what we're going to do here is okay so notice that it prompt us to import only cds or import the full sequence cds are actually a sequence of nucleotides that uh, corresponds with the sequences of amino acids and in a protein okay and uh, uh, what we're going to do here is to import uh, whether CDs or full sequence. But here we have to import the full sequence. No, So click OK. And then we have to take note of the name. No, So it is OK that uh, um, we just have to input homo sapiens or we have to input in the first word only and then you have to click OK and then it will prompt us to the alignment explorer. So I'm just going to adjust it so that you can it will be fit on the screen. So we have actually um, imported the genomic sequence no, of the first organism in the Mega X software. Now, um, you can see here the different um, amino acids. Of course, this is long because that this more than 10,000 of nucleotide base pairs. Now, um, let us uh, do, no, we, we have to uh, minimize this one and then we have to go back to the search, okay, we have to close this tab and then go to our next um, organism. Okay, so this is a chimpanzee. Okay, so this is actually a, if you try to um, enlarge your, uh, what do you call this? enlarge your window, you will be able to see the common name of the organism. So we have to get this one. So this one, no? Okay, and then right click again, the accession number. So we can open it in a new window. Okay, so this one. So we have to wait for the result and then automatically click add to alignment and then import full sequence and then click OK. And then you have to input the first word, in our case, the scientific name. And then, voila, it is included here. OK, so next, we have to look another um, sequence here for another organism. So here, the pygmy chimpanzee, we have to get its uh, sequence. So again, new window, and then add to alignment. Okay, we have to wait for its data. Add to alignment, and then the first word, and then click OK. And then we have the sequence here. Next, um, we have to go to the next organism we have here is the Pongo abeli, wherein it is a Sumatran orangutan. Okay, so we have to right click, new window. And then wait for the data to be loaded. And then you add to alignment full sequence, 
and then its name and then it is automatically imported here now we have uh, six more organisms to import or we can actually import all no so that we will have a uh, um what do you call this informative phylogenetic tree um let us try this one so right click open new tab or new window it's up to you and then add to alignment and then full sequence click ok the first word and then it's imported and then you have to close this one and then go to your other mm -hmm. organism so we are done with this and now this one, open new link tab and then wait for it to load and then add to alignment, full sequence, click OK. And the name, ayan. So we have six organisms here. Next, um, this one. So open new link tab and then you have to wait for it to load and then click add to alignment, full sequence, then first word, then click OK. So the process is just uh, repetitive no, for other organisms. Okay, so let us add another. Uh, let's try to look at our data so that it will not be repeated. Mm -hmm. um, Makaka fascicular is done. Oh, this one. So we have to open it in new link tab. And then add to alignment, full sequence, and the name. Click OK. Ayan. So this is actually done now. Uh, fastly, of course, in reference with your internet connectivity. So um, you have to take note of your, or you have to watch, no, that if you're going to have a sequence, you have to um, have a good connection. Otherwise, you will lose the data that you have gathered. Okay, so next is our what organism did we end mulata okay so this one yeah colobus angolanensis this is uh, what organism okay okay we just have to wait and then add to alignment and then full sequence, its name, click OK, and then go to other sequence, close the active tab, and then next here. Okay, so this is olive baboon. Okay, ako ata <laughs> Okay, so you have to wait for it to load and then. Okay, so there's nothing uh, happens here. I have to close it and then load it again. Mm -hmm. Open new link tab. Mm -hmm. So there are cases here that uh, the result will not uh, be. Mm. Okay, anyways, it is here na pala. So let us... Uh, uh, click add to alignment, import full sequence, and then the name, and then click OK. So we have 10 organisms here. Okay, now that we have entered uh, 10 of the organisms that we chose, um, let us try to analyze the 
genomic sequence of these organisms. Okay, so as you can see here in the genomic sequences of the organisms that we chose, um, they are actually, you know, uh, exactly the same across all the very different species that we have here. Okay, but of course, um, okay, you take a look at this, no? For this case, no? Um, it has different um, base pair, no? CAA, we're in for um, humans and other organisms, they have GGT and some GGG and some GTG and ACC. So now this is actually because of the um, evolutionary factors no? or the, uh, that I have told you, no? Uh, certain mutations of these genes occurred in some organisms, no? Wherein uh, the mutation were able to um, change the uh, sequence, no? Okay, so, okay, so we can actually start our analysis here. And you can um, click either the W button here, no? It is the uh, statistical program embedded in the Mega X, no? This is Clustal W algorithm. Or you can simply click Alignment and align by Clustal W, okay? So click this one. And then nothing selected for alignment. Of course, you select all, click OK. And then... <clears throat> What we're going to do here is uh, um, we have to click OK and then wait for the Clustal W algorithm progress. So uh, it actually def depends on the number of species that you input here on the Mega X software no, for that to be able to come up with the um, result. So the time no is based on the number of the genetic sequence and of course the number of species being analyzed here in the program so i'll be um posting posting the video recording and then i'll go back if the process has been done already okay okay so it is more than um um five minutes but then uh it is not yet finished uh, okay that is because of the number of uh, um, nucleotide bases of this uh, organisms but then you can see that uh, it is uh, being um, finished no okay it is almost done so let us uh, wait let us be patient and then let's wait for a couple of seconds to finalize the alignment of the nucleotide bases. Okay. And then, mm -hmm. takes more than 30 seconds, no? So it requires a lot of patience. Okay, so after, um, I think that is um, almost nine minutes or 10 minutes, no, of doing the alignment, and it is now done. So as you can see here, mm -hmm. so uh, there are, um, what do you call this, dash lines here wherein it represents now the, that uh, some of the sequence is not present in some of the organisms. But as you scroll it, no, you can see that almost all the base pairs are um, aligned with each other. So take for this example, no, all thymine, all guanine, cytosine, and adenine, no, are aligned. And there are some instances like this one, no, the inversion. Gabaliktad yung thymine and cytosine. No, there there are actually um, some factors that affect uh, this. Um, um, variation of the nucleotide bases of other organisms okay and of course what we are going to do here is and here we can also see the translated protein sequences okay click 
click yes. Okay, there you go. So there is actually a um, the translated protein sequences of the nucleotide bases that we have. Okay, and we go back to the original um, sequence that we have, and then what we're going to do is. So what we're going to do here is we we're going to save this one, no? So we have to save this and then um, name it as, okay, um, BRCA2, no? Because that is the marker gene that we use here. And then click save, okay? Now it will go back to the initial initial interface that we have during the introduction and then of course um, we have to click the phylogeny button here and then what we're going to do is to click the uh, bootstrap um, phylogeny method no particularly the neighbor joining tree we have to click that and then of course we have to find the sequence that we have saved so in that case we have our brca2 we have to open that and then it says here another um, pop-up uh, notification, protein coding nucleotide sequence data. You have just to click yes. And then this is now the um, settings. So just, you just have to click OK. And then there you have it, the evolutionary tree or the phylogenetic tree of the um, BRCA2 gene. So... We can actually have or we can control the um, um, labels, actually, not values. The labels, no? So we, ha we will be, um, uh, what do you call this? Arranging the taxa in a balance shape by input order. Or we can um, create another style for our um, phylogenetic tree. So it can either be in circle, okay, or oh, this like this one, or um, what else do we have um, in traditional is whether it's straight, okay, this one, and then um, by uh, curved, okay, like this. And I would like that my tree will look like a, like the traditional one, no, the rectangular. So this is how to make a phylogenetic tree out of the software. So this is one way of uh, getting the uh, phylogenetic tree of a certain um, organisms. Okay, but uh, um, I will be showing you the second um easy way on how to, um, what do you call this, um, do the construction of phylogenetic tree. So I have actually, um, we just have to close this one. Okay. So close, discard. Of course, we have to save this. Yeah, so save, and then we're going to open another, um, up. we're going to have another analysis, but then this is um, very easy, okay? So you just have to click on align, and then you click edit or build alignment. And then here, click create new alignment, and then okay. And then you have to click DNA. One that I am telling you uh, last time, no, with the regards of um, downloading you know, the sequence with our organisms. Actually, I have downloaded it and I will be showing you. Okay, so mm -hmm. this is the one that I am telling you. So I have downloaded the feline. Um, sequences or genetic sequences of the domestic cats no or the domestic cat with the other cats no 
and I will try to see if uh, these cats are related with each other. So I have downloaded the sequences from the same website, no? And uh, okay, so what we're going to do here is to click edit, insert sequence from file, and then choose the file that uh, is present in this folder that I have shown you a while ago. Mm -hmm. Click all of this, except the one that we have made, and then open. And then there you have it, all of the uh, sequences uh, of the organisms that we have. And then um, what we're going to do here is to perform the same um, cluster alignment. So select all, of course, and then click OK. And then we wait for the um, process again. This time, it is more than 31. So it will take... Uh, 15 to 20 minutes, so I will pause it again, and then I'll go back when it is done. Okay, so now that it is done, so I have saved it as feline, I'll go to the um, phylogeny button and then neighboring joining tree, perform boost, bootstrap method, and then click on feline, and then open, and then it will prompt you again, this one, and then um, another, click OK. And then you will see here the phylogenetic tree of the cats that I have chosen. No? So, yeah, so these are actually different uh, cats. No? Okay, so these are the um, phylogenetic tree of the feline. No? So we have here Panthera tigris, Panthera leo, Pardus, Onca. Okay, so this is how to do um, phylogenetic tree in the Mega X. So I'm so sorry I was not able to um, show you how to do it on Mr. Base. There are a lot of applications actually on performing or constructing phylogenetic tree. One is the Eugene no application that is very similar to mega x no um and uh, it has the same function but of course no different um company so different interface okay so why is it that bioinformatics is important no uh, after we have done um genetic analysis and of course the construction of phylogenetic trees no bioinformatics is important because of uh, uh, experiments do not exist in of course a vacuum well in fact the 2020 coronavirus pandemic shows that rapid data analysis and interpretation is much more powerful to help control the spread when that data is shared quickly and openly but it's not all about the production of new data because there are so many data that already exist, no? And analyzing data is hugely important. And sharing the results of this requires showing your work, no? Quote, unquote. The data you used, the methods you employed, the software that we used, of course, with different versions and parameters. This all takes time and effort, and bioinformaticians can help. Or, uh, yes, or certain um, bio bioengineers or genetic engineers, no, can help. And according to Dr. Matt Bound, which is a researcher in Hall Group and Kingsley Group, no, he um feels that this is a very important um, field because it allows reproducibility, no? which is one of the strongest, strongest reasons for publishing scripts and pipelines openly. So the lack of reproducibility of scientific findings has become something of a crisis in recent years, and it poses a stark threat 
to the trustworthiness of research outcomes. So with proper storage of data, along with the metadata that gives context, quote unquote, arguably, uh, arguably um, just as valuable as the actual data, no? Bioinformatics allows existing data sets to be reused and amplified. So given the right tools and appropriate practices, uh, we can actually develop novel hypotheses and add significant long-term value. And of course, all of that requires the raw de data to be made properly available, readily accessible, and easily findable. So that's where um, tools such as this one comes in, no? which act as a data broker for life scientists who can properly label the data sets so that it will be reusable for many years to come. And when the data is not properly labeled or not even made available, we have a problem, no? An alarming paper, no, wherein it is entitled, No Raw Data, No Science, Another Possible Source of Reproducibility Crisis, no? presented a stark argument to the life science community. Raw data and open source softwares are crucial for the reproducibility of science. And the fact that these research outputs are not always made available in journals, no, wherein uh, we cannot access some of the published journals there because uh, it requires us money to spend, no? And it poses quite some concern. So the generation and widespread adoption of bioinformatics infrastructures, and particularly an open access attitude to sharing biological data assets, is one route by which we might tackle this problem. And we have here the key word or key idea for today. It allows reproducibility, which is one of the strongest reasons for publishing scripts and pipelines openly. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope that you have learned something. And um, thank you for the participation.